Long Island Morning Edition is part of Your Election 2024, a special collection of programs, series, and resources from the WNET Group to illuminate election issues on air, online, and on YouTube leading into the November 5th elections. Learn more at WLIW.org slash Your Election 2024. Good morning. This is Long Island Morning Edition on 88.3 WLIW-FM, heard in Western Suffolk on 96.9 FM, and now in Montauk on 88.7 FM. I'm Michael Mackey. Long Island teachers, from public schools to the colleges, said the challenges of discussing this divisive and emotionally charged election are nearly as big as the need to discuss it. They said they plan to critically engage with the issues, foster respectful dialogue, and help students make sense of this moment in time. Craig Schneider and Darwin Yanes reported Newsday that teachers say they will help students separate facts from opinions, analyze evidence, and draw conclusions. You're supposed to be analyzing what's being said, said Gloria Sesso, president of the Long Island Council for the Social Studies, regarding the job of teachers. You're supposed to be looking at different points of view and not indoctrinating or telling people what to think. But how to think is a very important thing, she said. A good teacher helps students separate facts from opinions, analyze evidence, and draw conclusions, said Ms. Sesso. Peter Salins, a Stony Brook University political science professor, said a good number of his students go into politics or public service or a career, such as health care, where they have to deal with government. Salins said he wants students to grapple with the underlying dynamics behind this election, such as why so many people feel discontented with the status quo. My whole approach to public policy is to engage in intelligent discussion. I'm trying to teach that process how to accurately diagnose a public problem and use evidence-based information to create successful policies, said Salins. Suffolk's Social Services Department is redacting identifying information from reports used to consider removal of a child from a home, county officials said yesterday. The process, county officials argue, eliminates the type of biased decision-making that kept 8-year-old Thomas Valva in the custody of his police officer father before his death. Graham Parpan reports in Newsday that Suffolk Social Services Commissioner John Imhoff said under the new blind removal process implemented in the spring, Child Protective Services decision makers are no longer made aware of a parent's occupation, the names of family members, or their ethnic and religious backgrounds in cases where there is a possibility a child will be removed. There's absolutely no subjective information, Imhoff said at Thursday's news conference, announcing changes DSS has made in response to an April report from a special grand jury convened to investigate the department's handling of the Valva case. We all have unconscious stereotypes and views in our minds. They have to be eliminated in the evaluation of child protective service cases. The Commission on Veterans Patriotic Events will host its annual Veterans Day ceremony this coming Monday, November 11th at 11 a.m. at Agawam Park in Southampton Village. Prior to the service, there will be a short parade from the First Presbyterian Church down Job's Lane to the park. All veterans are invited to participate and are asked to be at the church parking lot by 10.30 a.m. Cars will be available for those who cannot march. The guest speaker will be Tim Hendricks, an author and former U.S. Army tank platoon leader and military intelligence officer. That's this coming Monday morning. The public is invited to the Southampton Veterans Day ceremony, and afterward, all are welcome for refreshments at Veterans Memorial Hall across the street from Agawam Park in Southampton, USA. 
Four people whose lives have been forever altered by a fatal Noyak fire in 2022 came face-to-face in Suffolk County Court in Riverside this week. T.E. McMorrow reports on 27East.com that Pamela and Peter Miller, the owners of a Noyak house where a fire claimed the lives of two young women who were staying there on vacation with their family, were sentenced in connection to the deaths yesterday in a Riverhead courtroom. Peter Miller, who had previously pleaded guilty to two counts of criminally negligent homicide, was sentenced to three years of probation and 200 hours of community service. His wife, Pamela Miller, who pled guilty to misdemeanor reckless endangerment, was sentenced to 100 hours of community service, which she has already completed, according to her attorney, Edward Burke, Jr., But before the sentences were pronounced by Suffolk County Supreme Court Justice Richard Horowitz, the Millers stood in silence as the last two surviving members of the Wiener family, Elisa Wiener, the mother to the deceased Jillian and Lindsay Wiener, and her son Zach Wiener, spoke about the horror they experienced on August 3, 2022, and about the pain and suffering they have suffered since the fire. The depth of the pain has been life-altering, Elisa Weiner told the court. There are times I don't recognize myself. My husband, Lou, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2020, she said, adding that he passed away in April. The Weiners were on an August vacation in the Hamptons in 2022 when their Noyak home burned down. A red flag warning is in effect across Long Island, New York City, and the lower Hudson Valley today from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. due to expected critical fire weather conditions. The National Weather Service in New York said today, Denise Civiletti reports on RiverheadLocal.com that a red flag warning is issued when a combination of strong winds, low relative humidity, and dry fuels will create a significantly elevated fire growth potential, the Weather Service said in a statement. Sunny skies with a west wind 8 to 15 miles per hour, with gusts as high as 25 miles per hour today, and relative humidity as low as 29% are expected, according to the local weather forecast. These conditions are considered critical fire conditions, and when they occur, rapid fire spread can be expected. Any fire that develops will catch and spread quickly. Any potential ignition sources, including smoking materials, such as cigarette butts, should be properly extinguished. This is the fourth time a red flag warning has been issued in the past two months. Local veterans organizations will be holding events celebrating Veterans Day this coming Monday, November 11th. Nicole Wagner reports in the Suffolk Times that Southhold American Legion Griswold Terry Glover Post 803 welcomes community members to its annual Veterans Day ceremony on Monday at 11 a.m. on the Legion front lawn at 51655 Main Road, Southhold. Following the ceremony, the Southhold Rotary Club will serve breakfast inside the Legion Post. Members of the Riverhead community will gather Monday at 11 a.m. at the War Memorial at 330 Court Street for the annual Veterans Day Remembrance organized by the Riverhead Combined Veterans Committee. The century-old tradition honors service members on the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. A growing percentage of Long Island households own their home without a mortgage, which raises questions about how these mortgage-free homeowners will affect the region's housing market in the coming years. According to a Newsday analysis of census data, Jonathan LaMaccia reports in Newsday that nearly 38% of Long Island homeowning households are mortgage-free, according to the U.S. Census Bureau's American Community Survey one-year estimates for 2023. That compares with 35.4% in 2018. The pattern on Long Island is similar to the national trend, with 39.8% of homeowners who own reporting they have no mortgage, according to an analysis released in late October by the National Association of Home Builders. On Long Island, more than half of these mortgage-free homeowners are 65 and older. Owners who have paid off their mortgage stand to potentially cash in if they were to sell their homes, which 
have seen substantial increases in value in recent years. But housing experts tell Newsday that a lack of attractive housing options, the expensive rental market, and seniors' preferences for staying in their homes all work against these mortgage-free homes hitting the market. Still, now Zhao, principal economist at NAHB, says she doesn't see a connection between the growing share of mortgage-free owners and national issues with limited housing inventory. That's because over the past decade, even when the number of houses on the market has climbed, that has continued. This has been Long Island Local News on Long Island's only NPR station, WLIW-FM. I'm Michael Mackey.